Okay. Ready? Uh, Actually, no, ready to go? Just a couple of updated numbers, that's all. Okay. All right. Uh, today is uh, December, or excuse me, December, <laughs> July 19th, <laughs> 2010. We're having a hearing on the refinancing of the bond that covers the Glasson High School um, remodeling that we did. And Ray, you're going to present the information on the bond, or you, Stacy? Um, sure, we can. Uh, we can I can yeah, walk you through. Yeah, you want to walk yeah. it right yeah, through it? Sure. I just want to make a note that there's no uh, public in the audience, so we simply are doing this for the uh, TV audience, so they can be aware of what we're doing. Okay. Uh, the concept for a bond refunding action is much like refinancing your home mortgage. Um, as interest rates become more beneficial to the homeowner or and in our case the school district we uh, are taking advantage of going out and refinancing on our construction bond issue which dates been now back to 2001 at the high school so we're approximately halfway through this particular bond and we'll be refining refinancing the second half of the bond payment schedule Right, we're not extending the payments beyond the current expiration right. date. Right. Uh, just uh, in the way of some quick numbers, and the numbers I'll share with you tonight are all approximate, but uh, close enough to get us into the ballpark and to give you a feel for the magnitude of the savings that we're going to be looking at. Uh, the current rate structure is going to afford the district savings in interest payments ranging from thirty-five to forty thousand dollars a year from now through uh, 2021 which was the maturity value for the existing debt instrument. Um, how that's happening is that the 2001 bond uh, has interest rate schedules ranging from four and three quarters percent today to an increase to 5% when it matures in 2015. And from 2015 to 2021, we'll be paying 5% per year. Uh, what we're looking at in the way of refinancing rates, or refund rates, if you will, are a half percent to 3.6% uh, in total overall interest charges. The Goffstown School District is looking at a two and three quarter percent uh, interest rate structure. And that's based on the district's AA3 uh, bond rating or credit rating, which calls this district, in other words, a very low risk to investors and a high quality uh, bond. So it's an attractive rating. Uh, budgetary savings and we're going to talk about net present value savings too. There are a couple of different ways of looking at this. Let's talk about budgetary savings first. And those are going to range from, well actually we're looking at a $405,000 savings in interest payments total between now and 2021 if we do the refunding. The total savings, if we look at a present value concept, and again, present value is what money is worth to us today versus what it would be worth to us uh, out in the future at some point. That total is going to be about $357,000, and that's based pretty much on determining what the present value of the remaining debt is at this point in time on the first bond issue, which is about $6.8 million, and what the total production cost of the new debt issue would be, and that's $6.46 million. So that gives us the ballpark savings again of about $357,000. Both ways of looking at it result in the same thing. The school district is going to be saving money over the balance of the of the bond period. Uh, another statistic for whatever it's worth is that the current industry standard uh, says that you should not do anything in the way of a bond refinance unless you're able to realize at least 3% savings on net present value calculations. Ours is going to be 5.9% if we proceed. We go forward. So, 
Uh, interestingly, since we talked about this in uh, June, in our first discussion back in April, we've seen significant rate movements to the school district's advantage as time has gone by. Okay. Um, how we were going to be doing this is, in essence, calling the, uh, the original issue. There were callable bonds, which means that we could redeem them. Uh, the par value of the bond issue that we will be recalling is $5.995 million, and we'll be issuing refunding bonds at $6.1 million, which is about $100,000 more than uh, what the original debt process was. One of the reasons for that is that we do have to finance a call premium, which is the amount of money the school district will need to pay the investors that currently have, uh, that are currently the bondholders. There is a premium that they're entitled to in the event that the school district would be calling bonds back early. It kind of guards against their, or guards them for their investments. Um, production costs, we had talked about that a little while ago. The production costs includes the call premium, what we just finished talking about includes issue costs, which are administrative and legal fees. The administrative fees will be with the first Southwest company who will be serving as the district's uh, agent through this whole process. The legal fees, we're going to owe Divine uh, Millimet and, uh, pardon me? Divine Millimet? Yeah. They're going to be acting as bond counsel for the school district. and. Um, between those two uh, functions, we're looking at about 0.95% of the new issue, which equates to about a $60,000 fee. The next thing included in <coughs> the production costs will be the underwriter's discount. This is, the best way to describe this is the profit that the under make, underwriter is going to make by picking, them up, picking up the bond issue and then reselling it to other investors. That fee is projected to be about six-tenths of a percent right now. That's going to be about $36,000 when we look at the, uh, at the new issue. The new bonds, again, as mentioned earlier, are going to be paid off within the same schedule. We are not extending maturity dates or uh, periods of time which the district will remain in debt. And the savings that we just talked about earlier at the start of this uh, discussion are net. In other words, all of the numbers, the fees that are associated with it are paid from the proceeds, and we're still going to be presented with the budgetary and net present value savings that we talked to earlier. Uh, just a little bit uh, about our first Southwest company who's going to be serving as the agent. Um, They'll be, uh, they'll be uh, acting as our uh, interface with rating agencies. They'll be doing all of our compliance reporting with us initially with the financial markets. They're developing the preliminary bond statements for us right now, which we will be able to use when we interface with the underwriter and with the bond owners as this progresses. And uh, they're going to assist us with pricing the new bond issue and timing it. Uh, uh, timing it is something the board might want to think about since we've seen some progression in interest rate movement since we started this discussion back in April. Um, we can reserve the right to act on this thing when we want to act on it. Uh, if there is a thought that we might have a more beneficial interest rate position within the next month, within the next two months, uh, we might want to delay action until that happens. That's an option that the school district has. So what the bottom line is, is we will go ahead and progress through the action, getting everything set up and ready to go, and then when we're comfortable with making the final decision, we can, in essence, pull the trigger at that particular point in time. So um, Ryan, would you anticipate, like, at our August meeting, coming back to the board at that point with an update on where finance rates are and whether that's a good time yes. or whether you recommend waiting a little bit longer? 
I would say that that would be a good point in time to do that, our August 8th. That way we'll have at least another three weeks of, uh, uh, of observation time, seeing how the rates are moving. We're not going to be talking about full percentage points and losing full percentage points. We're talking in terms of hundredths of a percent at this particular point in time. Um, and again, recent history, at least over the past three months, has been beneficial, at least for the school district, and it's expected to continue to be so. Um, just a little bit more on First Southwest, uh, in case uh, some of our uh, public wondering about the particular company. Uh, they are involved within the state of New Hampshire, and they currently have relationships with Laconia, the city of Laconia. Car Carroll County, Belknap County, they've got relationships with the city of Dover, from Rochester, the town of Londonderry. They're working with Nashua, Concord, Claremont, Keene, and they've got some relationships going with Belknap County and Stratford County. So uh, they are well represented in the state with current business. Uh, they do uh, come with a recommendation from our bank, Citizens Bank, and uh, we've also had a discussion with our bond council who refers to them as a reputable company that he's uh, worked with in the past and had successful business relationships. I have a quick question so, on sure. that. Sure. Um, what is their fee structure? Are they getting a flat fee? Are they getting a percentage of what they can get us? Or Yeah, the, the legal and administrative fee right now is 0.95% of the issue. So cost. that won't change? That uh, won't I mean, change. The, yeah, Percentage their rate won't, won't be changed based on the rate. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Any other questions? All right. As you know, we previously made a motion to move forward with this uh, in our August meeting. Unless something drastically changes between now and August and the rates start climbing, we'll address it in August. Because right now we do have the authority to move forward with it. So if the rates start to dramatically increasing for some reason, and we think they're not going, they're going to continue to increase, we will move quicker on it. Otherwise, we'll come back in August with recommendations to wait a little longer or pull the trigger right then and there. All right. So once more time, we'll ask any questions. All right. Um, can I have a motion to close the hearing because we have been open for at least 10 minutes as required in the RSA by Lori. Second, Second motion by Ginny. She was quick with her finger. Quick. All in favor of adjourning the hearing. That is unanimous. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, zero, zero. Our motion passes. The hearing is now concluded. Thank you. Done.